Hello and welcome to part two of this tutorial on retouching a Quinton Shaw watch. Here's the final image to be looking to achieve. And also here's a quick look at the one we're looking at in part three. So first off, go into Lightroom. Um, I did all three of these images together and they're all shot in RAW. So we've got the maximum amount of data that we can use to make adjustments with. And I'm just looking to balance the exposure and contrast between all of the images so that when we take them into Photoshop uh, we've just got to do the retouching rather than trying to make them match each other. So it's just basic um, exposure and contrast adjustments so that all three images match each other. Use that tone curve uh, and the black and white slides and also zoom in obviously just to check there's no blown highlights we've got all the detail there that we need. Obviously once I'm happy with all three of these, then I'll crop them down to size, straighten them up. Uh, I always crop them down just to make sure they've got a smaller TIFF image as possible I'm working with. Uh, put them all centralised and then export them as 16-bit TIFF files ready to drop them into Photoshop. So the next step is into Photoshop, step two. And once the image is opened up, the first thing I want to do is go looking to have uh, the image on a, uh, a transparent background is to cut it out from the background. Uh, once again, same as in part one, I'm just using the pen tool. And it's just a simple click and drag to give us a curved shape. And then using Alt on a Mac uh, to change the angle so we have some sharp angles so and get a very accurate selection all the way around the watch strap. Again same as on the first one we've got metal links in this watch and got to make sure that there's no uh, none of the the white background is left behind otherwise you get a, a halo around the outside of the watch and depending on what background you put on black or white you obviously don't want that halo to show up. Again pen tool takes quite a bit of practice uh, but once you get the hang of it, the basics are re reasonably easy. Uh, click and drag, use as few points as possible, and where you can, use the straight sections. Obviously this watch with lots of links, there's lots and lots of curves to do. Sections around the wire that I use to hold the watch. Uh, we can put back in later on, but I just made sure I have a bit of a rough selection around those because we're going to take care of that when we add in the, uh, the detailed areas of the strap back in. Enjoy the pen tools, if you do make any mistakes you can always go back and correct them, you can change any of the curves at any point, at any point you put down. So it's a, a good way to refine the selection. Here around these big curves, like I say, you can just use a couple of points, get a nice smooth curve. There is the overall outline now finished. Uh, just add in the extra sections at the top and bottom of the watch where the strap meets up. And then with all these together, load the whole path as a selection and add a 0.3 pixel feather to that. And then simply duplicate the background layer. Uh, again, I did a black and white background layer just so I can see uh, if there's a halo. Next step is cleaning, lots of cleaning. Uh, here, there were some gaps in the strap where you could see the, the white background through. So I just use the healing brush for those. And then use a clone stamp tool just to bring back in these areas of the strap. Then also take a selection, duplicate the selection, then use the warp and transform tool so I can position it to match up the links. The remaining areas 
I just added in with the clone stamp tool, taking areas of similar uh, texture of the links and adding them back in. Working methodical fashion, I always work around from 12 o'clock position all the way around in a clockwise direction. Uh, just keep it methodical so you don't miss any areas. This cleaning here is mainly done with a healing tool, healing brush tool. Um, there's lots of ways, as in Photoshop, that you can clean up, but it's a really important job in product photography to make sure that all the bits of dust are clean. Most of this dust you can't even see on the watch itself, but because of the, the light we're using um, to, to give us the gradients across the watch, and so you can see the inner details on the face, um, these bits of dust are highlighted, and you've got to clean them all the way. Once the face is done, move on to uh, the outside of the watch. You can see the difference there, just taking the, the areas of dust and cleaning them away. The crown was pulled out to hold the hands in position, so this is another pen path. There's a selection, duplicate that area, and then delete the area behind it. And with a, another section of the strap, so you can't see that. A simple layer mask takes that out. Once that's complete, continue with the cleaning. I can see some areas with some fibres still in there that I hadn't cleaned away properly. But again, it gives a really nice finish to the image because it's a nice matte finish on the watch. And that is really set off when you clean away all these pieces of dust. You can either use a spot healing brush or uh, just the healing brush, depending if you want to select the area you want to take the sample from. Again, working down the strap, taking away all the dust and also the gaps in between the strap, taking them all back to black. Now coming down the bottom end of the strap, taking out the background, and then again taking a very similar area, use transform tool to warp the selection so it matches the shape of the strap, and then a layer mask to hide that off, and then a clone stamp tool to clone back in the other areas. Once that's done, get onto the face. Now make a selection around the face, so I'm just selecting that area and then using various tools, generally a colour range, so I can just make certain adjustments and just adding a slight gradient to the face of the watch and also making opposite adjustments to the strap so you can control the contrast of the strap and the face separately. Again, make another selection and a curves layer and if you want to brighten up the face details I would use the colour range just to select the golden portions of the face. And then you can adjust them separately. Here we're using colour range. You can see the preview in the colour range box. To get the area selected you want, then just make the selective adjustments. It makes it a lot easier to control what's actually being changed. Once this is all completed, add a digital background, which is a black background, with a radial gradient uh, of low opacity, I think it was white, uh, in the centre, a slightly faded one underneath, and then just a simple drop shadow using a, a soft brush. And then I just use a transform tool to squash that brush down into a drop shadow. It's very simple, but it's very effective. Final bit of sharpening just to bring out the details. And here we have the final image on a simple black background. Uh, we also have the cutout images ready to send straight to the client. I hope you found this really useful and a good insight into how we retouch our images. And part three will be coming soon. will be the third and final view, which is at the back of the watch. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below.